Smart objects are always a good idea. You could even call them a smart idea. But um bump. <laughs> there are many levels to the complexity of using smart objects. The first method most Photoshop users will experiment with is converting an existing layer in Photoshop to be a smart object. As we've previously learned, this can be done to edit a background independently from the rest of a design. Double-clicking a smart object launches a .psb file of the layer into a new tab for editing. Once the PSB file is saved and closed, any edits performed automatically appear in the original Photoshop file. A second method for using smart objects is to create smart filters. If a filter is applied to a layer that has been converted into a smart object, it automatically becomes a smart filter. Unlike a regular filter, smart filters can be edited at any time in the future. If you don't like the original results, you can go back and modify it. Turn the filter off, add another filter, so on and so on. This example shows what a smart filter looks like when applied to a smart object. I've applied an iris blur filter to layer zero, which had previously been converted to a smart object. Photoshop automatically created the smart filter and nested the adjustment below the layer. There is a layer mask associated with the smart filter, which can be edited the way we would edit any other layer mask. In addition, double clicking the file name, in this case it says blur gallery, will launch the filters dialog box for continued editing. It should be noted not all filters can be edited via a launch dialog box. If the filter applied doesn't have a dialog box, this option won't be available for future editing. I'd like to demo how to use these smart filters in Photoshop. So I have one of the examples that we used earlier in this lecture, and you can see that I applied a tilt shift filter to it. But if I didn't like the settings, if I wanted to have more blur or less blur, or I wanted to change the positioning of what stays in focus and what becomes blurred, I don't have that option right now because I just applied the filter and it became a destructive editing process. I can't get back to having crisp and clear. But I did make sure that I just did this so I can actually hit edit step backwards. If I had made any other edits, I obviously couldn't do this and I couldn't repeat the process. But for the example, I want to remove the filter and I want to show you how to apply it as a smart filter instead of just a regular filter. Should we start calling them dumb filters if you don't use the smart filters? <laughs> that would be a great idea. And so I'm a big fan of always duplicating your background. You can either right click and duplicate or you can use command or control J to duplicate things. Um, since the layer was selected, it duplicated a layer. I'm going to turn off the background layer so I don't have to see it. And then I want to convert layer one to be a smart object. And you can do that by right clicking and choosing to convert your item to a smart object. Now it doesn't look like anything happened but it allows you to do editing independent of the document you're currently in. And so Whitney on the last slide was explaining what happens when you have a smart object. And so right now, kind of the first level of using a smart object is having a, an element inside of Photoshop be converted to a smart object. And when you double click on that smart object, it opens a new file. It didn't look like anything happened, but it did. It opened up a new file and I have a new file that's a .psb file and I could edit this inside the file. So if I added, let's say, a gradient, actually, you know what, I'm going to use the gradient map option for my adjustment layer. And then on the properties panel, if I choose a funky Let's do this one because it's really funky and ugly. Um, if I choose a gradient map and I edit inside this .psb file, when I close it, it will ask if I want to save the changes. I'll save them. And then when I go back to my original document, which I'm in now, so now I'm in the original image that I pulled off of the internet, those changes have flowed directly into the project. Now, I don't want that for what I'm demoing, so I'm going to go back, double click, and go back into the .psb file, and I'm going to turn off that gradient map, close the .psb file, and save. And now when I come back and I'm in the JPEG file that I was editing before, I'm back to the original. Now, what's important about smart objects from the perspective of applying a filter is that any layer that has already been converted to a smart object will automatically apply a smart filter if a filter is applied. And so if we go back to the filter menu and choose blur gallery and tilt shift like we had before, um, I can adjust the settings. I don't even care what they are right now, um, but I'm going to hit OK. And now if I decide that these are not the settings that I want, 
if you look at the layers panel, I can always go back and I can edit those settings. So I could modify the, the layer mask that's applied to the smart filter. I could double click the blur gallery. It would launch the blur tools panel, which allows me to modify. I could increase the amount of blur. I could decrease it and I could accept. I don't, I don't like that, so I'm going to add it back in. Um, I can accept those changes and I can always go back and I can always modify them. I could even be editing something that's kind of greater than the background. Maybe there's text and imagery and, and this is just kind of part of the background. You could decide that you don't want to have the blur applied at all and so you could turn the blur off and see how that affects or the way it looks in your image with or without the blur. Do you have anything else to add before we wrap up this lecture, Whitney? No, that's excellent. And we didn't necessarily use smart objects as we were speeding through the demonstrations, but you should always consider using smart objects for um, applying these filters. Yes, I would highly recommend it.